So a couple of weeks ago on the program, I talked about how I was shocked that Ben Shapiro publicly denounced Candace Owens after she decided to defend Kanye West following his death con three tweet about jewish people now ben shapiro is somebody who platforms a lot of very very despicable individuals one of them being theocratic fascist matt walsh and this is what he self-identifies as and another individual is candace owens so after giving these folks a platform and boosting their careers it's nice to see him at least denounce them when they say things that are explicitly disgusting and grotesque sometimes at least he agrees with matt walsh on a lot of his attacks on trans people so he's not going to speak out there but thankfully ben shapiro because he's jewish himself does condemn anti-semitism which is nice i just wish that he would extend his clear Clarity on the issue of Kanye's anti-Semitism to other areas where marginalized people are being attacked and hate crimes are on the rise, such as trans rights, but you can't expect that much from a right-wing propagandist. Either way, I gave him credit where it was due for condemning Candace Owens, but now it seems as if things have only deteriorated because they're essentially publicly feuding now. So Candace Owens responded to a tweet from Grey Zone grifter Max Blumenthal, which reads, We white American Jews are living through a golden age of power, affluence, and safety. Acceptance of this welcome reality threatens the entire Zionist enterprise from lobby fronts like the ADL to the state of Israel because Zionism relies on Jewish insecurity to justify itself. Now, I don't necessarily know what he's trying to say exactly, but it seems like that first sentence in particular is him trying to lend credence to this claim that Kanye West is correct, or at least that's how Candace Owens is interpreting this seemingly. So this is what she said in response. You were about to get into a lot of trouble for saying this. Reminds me of when I said something similar about the NAACP and BLM way back when. When you disrupt the trauma economy and call out the not-for-profits that benefit from it, you become their next target. Now, Ben Shapiro saw her response to Max Blumenthal and he decided to attack them both. Not necessarily attack Candace Owens, but criticize her for associating with him. He writes, I think the ADL is a partisan hack organization too, but retweeting Max Blumenthal, who spends his life covering for Jew haters and stumbing for Israel's destruction, makes the conversation significantly worse. It's garbage. Now, I think that he is referring to the fact that Max Blumenthal is a critic of the Israeli government. And... I would agree with Max Blumenthal there. I think that the government itself is overseeing an apartheid regime, and I think that that is absolutely disgusting. However, I disagree with this notion that Jewish people are at a period, like this golden era of power and whatnot, like anti-Semitism and hate crimes against Jewish people. It's on the rise, so I don't agree with him there. But when it comes to the Israeli government, I agree with Max Blumenthal there, but seemingly Ben Shapiro does not agree with him on that particular issue. Uh, and because of that, well, he's kind of throwing Candace Owens publicly under the bus. And she did not take kindly to this because she actually responded to Ben Shapiro there saying, I don't know who Max Blumenthal is, but I do know that you have my number and could have informed me in earnest. Real relationships should trump Twitter theater. Let's set a better example going forward. So she's accusing Ben Shapiro, who I believe is her boss, of doing Twitter theater. Essentially, she's saying he's virtue signaling by publicly calling her out when he could have just called her. And to that, I think that she has a point. There's no reason to publicly beef with someone who you're aligned with and is a co-worker of you or a subordinate, presumably, because he runs the Daily Wire. She has a show on the Daily Wire. So there's no reason why you can't just talk to each other. But I'm glad that he didn't, and I'm glad that he's choosing to make this public because I think that infighting on the right is a net good for humanity because of all the disinformation and lies that they peddle. So whenever they're batting each other, butting heads, I think that's better because they're not spending that time, uh, you know, lying about trans people or spreading misinformation about the elections. Although Ben Shapiro, his hands are clean there, but individuals like Candace Owens does promote these lies. Now, this is not the first time that Ben Shapiro has condemned Candace Owens publicly. I talked about the first time that he did this, but also one instance where he did this that I didn't cover on my program, although we talked about this on Twitch, is where he publicly said something that um, is a pretty sharp criticism of Candace Owens. He is an anti-Semite. He's saying lots and lots of anti-Semitic things. I, I'm not sure what more there is to say about that. 
the only thing I might add is that he's pretty obviously bipolar, and I would think that right now he looks like he's in the middle of a manic episode. I only say that because I have members of my family who have been bipolar and have had manic episodes, and one of the characteristics of a manic episode is that everything that comes out of your mouth you think is a wonderful idea, even when everyone around you is telling you to stop, uh, which seems pretty obvious because he uh, continues to destroy his career and uh, his wealth base based on his own foolishness, malice, and bigotry. Uh, so, you know, that's all I have to say about Kanye. Uh, I will say that I'm amused by some of his theories. I have, I have some questions about some of his theories. Uh, I mean, namely, his, uh, his, his theory that, that the Jews perverted Kim Kardashian is a weird one. Uh, I have lots and lots of questions about, about how that happened. He actually, I think his line was that, that Kim Kardashian was a wonderful Christian mother of four black children, and then the Jews perverted her. And I seem to remember Kim Kardashian, before she was a beautiful Christian mother, doing <laughs> some things. As far as defending her, I don't think that anybody should be defending her. You know, my, my friend Candace Owens is friends with Kanye. She initially gave a response. Candace is great, but she, she initially gave a response that I thought was uh, pretty wrong, uh, both uh, morally and sort of logically. But we allow disagreement at the Daily Wire, even when I think that some of my colleagues are wrong. If she had said, let's put it this way, if she had said what Kanye had said, she wouldn't be working at the Daily Wire. She did not say what Kanye said. Instead, she defended her friend initially in a way that I didn't like, but that is not a fireable offense, nor do I even have the power of firing at the Daily Wire, which is why Michael Moll still works there. Ha 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 Look, to be fair, Ben Shapiro was actually being pretty reasonable and somewhat, dare I say, funny there. Uh, genuinely so, and I think it's because he's actually being honest and not lying or trying to go out of his way to do propaganda. But he says there very clearly that if Candace Owens said what Kanye West said, she would not be working at the Daily Wire. But he claims that he doesn't have the power to fire anyone, but she just would not have been hired in the first place. But essentially what he's communicating here to the audience is that he disagrees with what uh, Kanye West said so vociferously that he would not associate with someone who said that. So it's got to really bug him that she defended someone like Kanye West. And I understand why he wouldn't want someone who he's a colleague with to defend that overt anti-Semitism because it is overt anti-Semitism and anyone who denies that is just lying. They're being purposefully obtuse or they're anti-Semitic themselves and they like that Kanye West is saying terrible things about Jewish people. But I've got to say, look, to be perfectly honest here, I don't care about the substance of this story one bit. What I care about is that the right is factionalizing and that is really, really important, not just for the left, but for America. See, over the weekend, Donald Trump also criticized Ron DeSantis and referred to him as Ron DeSanctimonious, which is not Trump's best work, but I'm glad that he did that because after he did that, individuals like Matt Walsh and other right-wingers decided to criticize Donald Trump for being divisive. And for the first time, perhaps in years, we're starting to see real cracks form on the right. And there's been real solidarity among fascists. So the infighting is something that I just didn't anticipate. But the fact that it's happening is very important because if the right begins to factionalize in the way that the that the left has factionalized, at least the online left, then I think that this is very, very good because usually they put aside their differences and all of the dis these disagreements that they have, they try to, you know, quell them quietly. But now things are getting so ugly, lines are being drawn so clearly that you have Daily Wire colleagues going after each other. And that is very important. You have 2024 presidential candidates going after each other. And I think that that's very important. So wherever there is right wing infighting, I'm going to celebrate that because these individuals pose a real threat to democracy. They pose a threat to the planet by obstructing climate change. So if their propagandists are publicly battling each other, if their high profile politicians and rising stars are publicly battling each other, it's just cause for hopium. And I think that when there's so many bad news going around, we've got to celebrate the small victories and seeing public disputes between these propagandists who I loathe, I think that is a, pub uh, th that is a small victory. I think that is something that we should celebrate. So. There you have it. You know, it's a small victory, but it's a victory nonetheless. Anytime these ghouls go after each other and rip each other apart, I say let them fight.
Hold up. Wait, 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 wait,